So, indeed, we're going to talk a little bit about what's happened uh, in Core during the last year. Mostly about the things that have changed uh, feature-wise in WordPress, but also about uh, some of the things that have gone on, on in the community, uh, whether positive or negative, and maybe we can have a little chat in the middle, too. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. As he noted, I am indeed Mike Schroeder. A lot of, a lot of people uh, call me Shredder within the community. Um, yeah, the name is similar. And uh, I have a little bit of a personal branding issue. So Twitter is GitSource if you want to find me. That's not the same as anything else. But yeah, I, I guess uh, the claim to fame, I suppose, is that I worked on, or I co-led uh, WordPress 3.9 with Nason just over a year ago. So I don't get to talk about that, unfortunately. Um, but we'll talk about some other cool stuff that's happened since then. And uh, yeah. So I decided to submit uh, this talk about a retrospective because I think that it's important to know where we've come from uh, as a community, and especially uh, to sort of reevaluate where, where we're at. Um, every once in a while. And I think that's something that you know, sometimes happens in projects and sometimes it doesn't. I saw, I saw that Constantine uh, Obenland, who uh, was just the release lead of 4.3, posted a really cool post on uh, make.wordpress.org slash core about exactly that, a retrospective of, of his release. And I hope that we continue to do those. And uh, so we're going to go through and we're going to talk about some of these things. The other reason is that I have a bit of a personal stake because I started doing week in core posts a couple of years ago. And these are posts that end up on, on this blog. So if you're interested in following along, who already, who, who already follows along on the, on the make WordPress.org blogs? OK, I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit about what goes on there. So there is a network of blogs on make.wordpress.org that cover all of the different community groups within WordPress. So there's one for core. Um, there's one for UI, UX. There's one for community. There's one for accessibility, uh, support. And I'm sure some other ones that I'm not remembering because I didn't write them down in front of me. Uh, but all of the community group, or all of the different groups uh, that contribute to WordPress are, are represented right there. And so you can get regular information about any groups that you're interested in directly from there. Specifically, if you're interested in knowing what's going on with core, make.wordpress.org slash core will give you that information. And these posts, uh, currently headed up by, by the great Morgan Estes, is, are, really, are great for just summarizing exactly what has happened recently. There are a ton of changes constantly going on within WordPress due to the number of contributors. And it's difficult even for people that have been in the community a long time to follow along and see what's going on just based on watching the more technical uh, cited areas. So, so for instance, watching the subversion log and seeing kind of what comes by. A lot of times the context is lost as to what's important and what's not for, for users or for developers or for, for people that, that really want to know what's coming up next. So these are really great to follow. And they end up getting used by the docs team at the end of each release to fill out that cool wiki page that has all the details about uh, technical changes and things like that within WordPress. Those are also really great articles uh, to take a look at if you're wondering what you should be paying attention to when a release comes out. So I'm mainly going to talk about the time from September 4th, 2014 until September 4th, 2015. So who already understands the difference between uh, major and minor releases for WordPress and what they entail? OK, cool. So a few people. I'll, I'll go through that. So we, when we talk about a major release of WordPress, we're talking about a release that goes uh, one point upwards. So the difference between 4.2 and 4.3. That, that was what we term a major release. A minor release is something like 4.2. 3.1, which was just released recently. And the difference between those two is that with major releases, generally we're focused on uh, new feature. Of course, there, there are always fixes for stability and speed and, and those, those sort of things. But we're especially focused on new features there 
whereas in minor releases, they're generally only fixes for those features and, uh, and security updates for WordPress. So they're very, they're very much focused on increasing the stability of the platform as opposed to adding additional features or other things like that. And I, yeah, I don't know of a time that we've, that we've put a feature into one of those. They're always very small patches. Part of the reason behind that is that those, as of WordPress 2.7, have been automatically up, run as automatic updates for anyone that's running, that's running WordPress. So obviously, or maybe not obviously, a lot of software projects that uh, are open source often run on much longer release schedules than this. And you'll see one major release in a couple of years, in two or three years. So this, com comparatively speaking, is a pretty quick pace. Had I included the the minor release that just came out immediately after my, <laughs> my time frame, it would have been 11 releases in a year. So that's a lot to coordinate and, and a, lot to, a lot to push on. So there are arguments definitely to be had as to whether it's an appropriate speed. I think that there are plenty of people that would say, well, I think maybe we should do fewer ones to reduce upgrade fatigue and things like that, but I think Either way you look at it, it tells us that the WordPress project is healthy and it's constantly evolving and moving forward. And I think that's, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. What do you call if you wrote 4 to 5? Um, so we wouldn't jump directly from 4 to 5. We consider, we consider the major points to be the same as, as the rest. So we consider the, the change from 3.9 to 4.0 to be the same as 3.5 to 3.6. So within the WordPress project, there's no, there's no difference between those two. Are there any other questions about major and minor releases and how they work? So it's not like Windows 8.0. Right, it's not, it, it, doesn't work, it doesn't work the same way, no. Um, I, I do want to run a quick poll. How many people have had issues with the automatic minor release like updates that happen in the background during the past year. You, okay. I got one site that just doesn't seem to want to update. Oh, it, so it's not that it breaks the site, but it just doesn't update? Okay, cool. Is there anybody else? So we hear very, very low breakage uh, regarding them. Um, if I were nascent, I would probably have the exact percentage, but I'm not, so I don't. Um, but it usually, it usually numbers in, in under 100 for the millions of updates that happen from the, the stats that I remember seeing. So they're very low. That said, I always like to make sure and ask because I do hear of people that don't want to, but are kind of afraid of the automatic updates. And so if there's anything we can do to fix those cases that where there are problems, then we definitely want to do that. So Andy, let's chat afterward about your, about your site and we can take a look and see if we can figure out uh, what's up with it? Because I would love to love to get it working. How how many people have had issues after either a host automatically upgrades you a major release, or or you click the button yourself and you upgrade to a new major release? Okay, a few a few more people. So we would love to have major release auto updates. This is the reason that it's not happening yet. <laughs> And it's not a lot of people. It's still a small amount of people, but it, you know, it's enough. So actually, I would love to chat with you guys too about exactly what it is. is it, well, was it related to plugins or themes that weren't updated yet? It might just be deprecated functions in some page showing up as errors. Okay, deprecated functions, same, same sort of thing. Okay, cool. And I assume WP Debug must, was turned on, or was the host just setting the settings so that it was um, causing problems? Okay, so the biggest problem was working with the site after the update, you noticed the install. So it didn't break the site? No. Okay, well that's really cool to hear. Same thing. Same plugins thing. And yeah. Plugins and themes? Yeah. Mostly plugins. Mostly plugins? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to see someday us have both um, plugins and potentially themes, of basically everything, be on, on an auto update sort of cycle so that you don't have to worry about it because generally speaking, when 
we see issues, and here we, I'm talking about the, during the, the DreamHost part of my job, it, it has to do, usually when we see issues that come up with WordPress, they're almost always related to like out-of-date plugins, and especially when it comes to security. And so I, I think that making security better is good for everyone, both for users and for hosts, you know, for everyone involved. And so eventually, maybe we'll be able to do that. Um, in the meantime, keep, we'll keep working at it. And yeah, if you do end up having issues with any of these, definitely you know come talk to me or other members of the of, of the uh, development community for WordPress, and we'd be happy to help. So let's talk about the releases. WordPress 4.0, Benny. Um, if each WordPress release is named after a different jazz artist, and so Benny was the, was the uh, jazz artist here, was released on September 4th. It was led by the amazing Helen, uh, along with 275 contributors, which, which is pretty, it, that's pretty cool. That's a lot of people, and it's contributors from all around the world. And you don't have to contribute a lot of code to be counted in that. It can just, it can be as small as, you know, a quick, a quick typo fix, but any of that is, is always appreciated. And so if you're interested in helping out, uh, come and chat with me, and we'll talk about how to help you get involved. But Helen, Helen is a WordPress lead developer, and she is the director of platform experience at TenUp. So she's she's pretty amazing. I one thing that I've appreciated about the way that the core team has been handling uh, release leads during the past year to year and a half, there was a change in there was a change in the way that WordPress releases were looked at. For several years, it was the same group of about three or four people that were trading off back and forth, and those same people were leading releases over and over again. Nason used to joke that he had led every odd release for for years, and we'll just say there was a little bit of burnout, and so the decision was made to start bringing in new people. So every release that was led during the past year was led by somebody new. Uh, not new to the community, but that had never that had never led a release before, and so I actually think that's pretty cool. And you'll notice that the leaders of these, most of them are from from varying companies, and not from not they've been spreading it out further than the sort of automatic and Audrey Audrey Capital, who is uh, for those that don't already know, Audrey Capital is a company that's run by Matt Willenweg, and he. Uh, contributes to the community by paying for developers to be able to work on the project uh, through Audrey Capital. Uh, so previously, a lot of them had been in that sort of group, and it's been widened a lot, which I think is great for, for project leadership in general. So one of the new things that came with WordPress 4.0 was the media grid inside the media library which I think is pretty cool. It came at the expense of plugins that used to, that managed columns not being compatible with this new interface. You can still switch back and forth. So you can, you can use the old interface if you decide that, that you want to use it. But I like this a lot because I think it's a lot more suited to if you want to manage images exactly how you want to manage images. You want to care more about which image it is you're, you're manipulating than about, I don't know what, the all of the IPTC details being displayed at the same time. So that was pretty neat. Another cool thing that was done, and we'll see if this will we'll see if this will play for me automatically or not. It might not. There we go. Okay. So another cool thing that was done was. In 3.9, we added the ability, uh, an API called WP View that allows essentially iframes of content or uh, that allows more content to be displayed in real time within the TinyMCE uh, window, which is pretty cool. And it allows us to do stuff like this. Initially, it was used in 3.9 for AV playlists and things like that. And in 4.0, it was expanded to also include embeds like YouTube. And gradually, more and more inline embeds have been added based on this. 
the other thing it's used for are things like um, resizing images directly within the editor, which you can do now. And so we've been gradually moving toward having the experience that you have within the admin be closer and closer to what it is on your site. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. Then came WordPress 4.0 Dyna. It's led by John Blackburn, and yes, this is his gravatar. It's not very easy to recognize him based on this. I didn't know who he was for a while after I first met him. <laughs> but he's a core developer and works at Human Made as a WordPress engineer. Um, and if you ever want to find him, he's this guy standing, standing next to Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> I don't think so, but I, I really like this one though. And I remember seeing a couple of memes uh, around this picture too, with walking away from the fire that didn't really happen, but kind of happened at WordCamp San Francisco last year. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. But yes, it's not. It's 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 the guy that's not Joe Nason or Otto. Um, 2015 was one of the bigger headline features of WordPress 4.1. Um, it was designed by Takashi Ire, and it was a significant shift from 2014 because that was a magazine theme. Generally speaking, in WordPress, what we try and do is shift the visual style significantly at least every other year so that you end up with a variety of themes for different purposes within the default install. And we get to talk about 2016 later, which I'm excited about. 2014. 2014 was a was a magazine style. And what's that one. No, what, do you call it? what do I call it? Um, blogs. You, you wanted to no, add something? Uh, I don't know if there's a particular name for it. It can be used for blogs. One of the things I like about the theme actually is that it's very adaptable. You can use it for for a more sort of standard website related. Uh, set up, or you can use it for a blog really easily. And it has a lot of features that are really easily, that you can change very simply within the customizer to make your site look very different than everyone else's in just a few clicks. That's one of the things that I like most about it, for sure. Yeah? Yeah? OK, cool. Yeah, I mean, does anyone else have questions about default themes? I don't know all the answers, but I can try. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, we can, we can talk about that a little bit. So I suspect that, I suspect that a lot of it, some, someone mentioned, I think it was, uh, yeah, 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 I think it was Andy, mentioned track. And absolutely, track is a lot of it. So we use a, a system called track to track all of the different uh, bugs and features that are, that are happening within WordPress. So if you go to the, the core track, which is open to everyone, you can go and you can see bugs that people reported or report a bug if you find one and do work directly there. And so most contributors that work on things will go directly there and you can sign up to different bits that you're interested in working on for notifications. So if you're just interested in JavaScript bugs, then you can just be notified whenever those come in. If you're just interested in UI issues, you can be notified when those come in. If you're just interested in theme issues or media issues, then you can, you can do that too. And fixes to those different issues get submitted directly to those tickets that are on track. So sort of the flow that happens is ticket comes in, and then we have a a group of excellent gardeners that will go through and will look at every single ticket that comes in and appropriately mark it or change it if it needs to be if it needs to be changed and sometimes leave initial comments and then those that are connected to or those that are have worked on the components before will see oh this ticket just came in it's related to this and take a look and and work through it uh, there are also sessions that happen during releases where everyone uh, gets together and we call it bug scrubbing and goes through the bugs that are currently assigned to the release, or just for old bugs that maybe should be removed, or old bugs that should be brought to attention. 
Uh, outside of that, at the higher level, a lot of that is handled by, well, I guess, a, I guess a group of people. So we have a project manager whose name is Sam, and I'm, why am I forgetting Sam's last name? Thank you. Sam Sidler is, is the WordPress project manager, and he does a lot of talking between people to help things uh, run smoothly. But also, I don't know if it's this way for every, for every lead, but basically I would describe the time that I spent leading a release as wrangling everyone, you know, wrangling cats, essentially, yeah. Uh, because it's, it's interesting, because almost everyone that works on the project is a volunteer, right? And so it's them giving their time, and you want to be respectful to that time. And at the same time, you want to figure out how you can get certain things ready or, or you know, prepared for the release. And so it's this interesting balance. And there's, and there's not a perfect formula. It, it's working OK now, but I think that there's a lot of room for us to make things more, yet more accessible to developers that want to get involved. It's still a very, it's a very complicated system, and track is not inviting at all. It's, it's really, it's, it can be difficult for even people who are pretty technical to look at. So I think that's something that we can change. Does that answer your question? Cool. So another couple of things that got added. Uh, I'm a particularly a fan of this of the top one. Previously in WordPress, you couldn't change your language once it got set up at all. And as of the version before, there wasn't there was no language selector on on sign up either. And so it was pretty hard to get WordPress installed in your language. And now all you have to do is, as of WordPress 4.1, all you have to do is go into your settings and select your other language and you have your other language and you have WordPress running uh, immediately that way so that you can understand it and use it. So that's pretty cool. The other, the, the other feature, and this is more, a little bit more technical, but previous to 4.1, logins depended on just a session cookie that sat on the machine that it was on. WordPress had no knowledge of who was installed or who was logged in from where in the database, which both, both is a security issue and it's also a problem for developers that want to be able to rely on sessions. And so a session API also came out at the same time as this. And so the logout everywhere allows you to get rid of all the sessions and now developers can rely on this instead of trying to write something special for PHP sessions, which is, yeah, is particularly nice. WordPress 4.2 was released in April on the 23rd by Mr. Drew Jaynes, who, yeah, <laughs> who, who is a core committer. He specializes in docs, and he's also a platform engineer at 10up. And this, and there were 283 contributors. I mean, any of these numbers are just kind of, kind of a bit, to me, they're exciting, you know. Uh, to, see, to see that many people that are interested in helping out and, and, and helping out all the time. One of the things that came with WordPress 4.2 was extended character support, which is pretty cool because now we have better native support for languages like Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, which uh, previously only basically had partial support or sometimes they had to change their tables to be able to match to it. And, that's just not right. We should be. We should be. We should have support for them, right? So that was neat, and also as a side effect, it meant that we got emoji, which I think I don't know. I hear more. I hear more excitement about that than the language, but that's okay. I think emoji are pretty cool too. So I guess, I guess there's that. Uh, this also meant that in the back end, uh, if your host supports it, your tables were were upgraded to uh, UTF MB4, which if you don't understand what that means, it, it doesn't matter. Um, you, can, you can fit more characters in them, basically, uh, a wider variety. So previously, those other, those other the special characters from other languages just couldn't fit into the table. And now there's, there's extra space for them to do that. Okay. I, have, I have talked more than I thought I would. I have asked more questions than I thought I would. So we'll see how this goes. So um, the new version of Press This also shipped, which makes it a lot easier for users to directly put content in. 
I haven't, it is, does anyone here use Press This? I haven't used it too much. Uh, people that, uh, that use it actually say it's pretty cool. So if you, if you frequently embed content in your site or in your blog from other sites, I definitely suggest you check it out because it works pretty well. And you just click a little button in your browser and you, then you have the content in your WordPress. So it's, it's kind of cool. You can also switch themes directly in the customizer, which makes it so that there's a little bit less save and surprise. Just something that we've been trying to sort of fix across all of WordPress. So that brings us to WordPress 4.3, which was just released on August 18th uh, by Mr. and was led by Mr. Constantine Obenland. He is a core committer. Yeah, woo, Constantine. <laughs> He's, he's a core committer, and he's also a code wrangler, code wrangler over at Automatic. Uh, he's had his hand in both the default themes and other WordPress code for some time, but super exciting to see him lead. Uh, the release was seriously run like clockwork, uh, with every single deadline being hit exactly on the nose, which is, which is pretty neat. It's, it's, not, it's not, not easy. <laughs> so this is something I wanted to talk about just a little bit. Menus within the customizer were released as part of WordPress 4.2. I'm guessing a few people in here might, I don't know, who is aware of the excitement slash controversy surrounding, surrounding menus in the customizer? So yeah, and OK. This is an interesting, an interesting thing that happened. It, I think it was initially assumed that, this, that supporting menus within the customizer was a, was a very clear choice because otherwise you have complete save and surprise over menus when you're, when you're moving them around and when you're editing them. However, there was some communication that happened on, one, on the core make blog that indicated that the pro that was worded in a way where the proposal was read as an edict on what was going to happen. And this led, this led to a lot of frustration over, over the core process and sort of presentation of ideas and, and communication back and forth. And I think it was a good exercise for the community, but it certainly, it certainly made everyone more aware of, of, the importance of the importance of proper communication, especially through official channels and things like this. And I hope that that's something, that back and forth is something that can keep going. We've already seen increased comments happening on those, on the core blog because of it. I, I suspect it's because of it. And so I really hope to continue to see that. I encourage anyone who's interested in following what's going on with core wants to have a word in it to watch those blogs and to comment, absolutely. Because otherwise, otherwise you, you, if you don't get the feedback, then you don't know that you should be changing direction. So I'm going to go ahead and move to talk about this. Another big feature was the, it was adding app icons, or adding both site icons and app icons to WordPress. This is something that had existed in Jetpack for some time. And the code wasn't directly ported, but it was a feature that we wanted for years. The trouble was that to be able to do it, we had to add a library that supported icons just for this feature because none of the image manipulation stuff that people already had on their servers did it. So we put it off, but then all the major browsers started supporting uh, PNG and we were able to do it right away. So Constantine worked pretty hard on getting, getting this out the door with it and I think it's particularly nice for users that have a default icon that was added by their host because then you can just go in there and change it to whatever you want without any trouble. Also, you no longer have comments enabled on new pages. <laughs> this was one of the most confusing features for me when I was starting to use WordPress too. When I first installed it, the first thing I did, add a page and wonder why, I assume that's my timer, but, and, and wonder why I had comments there and how to disable them. And it felt like I had to be, it felt like I had to already know how WordPress worked on the inside to turn it off, which wasn't, which wasn't fun. But now, you don't have to deal with that anymore. So I have, I have run out of time to talk about the future, which is sad. Oh. 
I mean, if I have time for questions, then I'll, then I'll keep going. If I have time for questions. Oh, OK. All right, all right. So I still do have. All right, all right. So that explains why I, why I slightly, uh, why I, OK. Cool. I assumed I had the time, and then was a little surprised. So that's good. That's cool. So we'll take a look at the future then. Um, I'm going to get out my crystal ball, and we'll find out how accurate it is in a bit, in a couple months. So it's being led by, by Scott Taylor, who is a, he's a WordPress core committer, and he's also a senior software engineer at the New York Times. He somehow manages to split his time between WordPress integrations for the elections and leading a release, which I'm not exactly sure how that happens, and also maybe sleep, I don't know, but I don't know. He also plays in a band, so I, I don't know. He's, I, I guess he's just superhuman or something. Um, but yeah, so from here on out, nothing is confirmed. Well, except that as of last Wednesday, we've had five weeks so far and 727 commits to WordPress core. <laughs> I actually don't remember the number by Scott, but I think it's like 200 or 300, 255. So if you're not aware with what commits are, they're each, it's, it's each different change to the WordPress code base is called a commit. And so this is extreme, pro this is extreme progress. And he's, he and everyone that's working on, on going through and cleaning out old bugs, almost all of these fixes, almost all of these commits are fixes for old bugs. So we've closed tons and tons of old bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is a lot faster clip than normal. I did not look up the exact number, but I mean, I can look for you later if you want. Yeah, yeah. This is for 4 4. Yeah, this is just 4 4. So, yeah, this is, this is at a pretty incredible clip. And especially the bugs getting closed are kind of what we're all most excited about. Because, you know, you know a lot of bugs that are filed are super useful and they're important things that we need to change. And they get lost. And so he's been putting a big focus on finding those things and getting the right people to look at them so that things can get fixed in WordPress and all contributors can have their patches looked at. And it's, I, I'm excited about it. Also, 2016. So this is one example of, of, uh, of what it'll look like. You can actually try out 2016 right now if you want. You can install it directly from the WordPress uh, theme repository. So you can check it out right now. And if you're interested in contributing, it's on GitHub. And they're absolutely accepting contributions. So if you're interested in it, then check it out. This is also designed by uh, Takashi. And I don't know. I'm excited about where it's, it's going to go. Another thing that, that uh, so now I'm going to talk about a couple, of, uh, a couple of feature plugins, which are essentially plugins that get written with the express intent of making it to core. So each cycle, each, uh, each release cycle, so like during 4.4 or during 4.3, we go through and look at the ones that are available, and they can propose to be merged, to be included within WordPress during that cycle. So that's, those decisions are, well, they're supposed to happen this week on Wednesday. So we'll see which ones, we'll see which ones I'm right about and which ones I'm not. But this is an oEmbed plugin that you can see. And this is a, a plugin to be able to add an API to WordPress so that you can, just like with YouTube, how you insert into, in, how you insert a YouTube link in and it automatically fills out with all the content, this would let you do that with WordPress posts between WordPress blogs. And also, providers that are not WordPress would be able to hook in to the OEmbed API to be able to insert your posts the way you want them to look. So, so that's kind of cool. Another thing that we're working on is, I, I have a little bit more of a personal stake in this one, I suppose. I'm working with some of the developers on, on this particular plugin. And what it does is provide responsive image support for WordPress just automatically. So it doesn't have a UI. It doesn't have, doesn't have anything that users have to, have to go in and, and play with. But it looks at the existing images that you have and that you've inserted into your posts and checks to see if there are other sizes and automatically puts those, those appropriate sizes into source set and sets up sizes the way that it should be so that you have responsive image support. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> the next thing that's going in is not what everyone maybe sort of wanted, but in between. 
So everyone that knows about the REST API knows that it's kind of been put off or, or sort of in development for a while. Um, the REST API is, well, a way for applications to, to communicate with WordPress or even to build themes that are, that are using WordPress that it's an easier way to retrieve and, uh, retrieve and store information than, than anything that we have right now. Uh, it's, a, it's pretty important for the development of WordPress, but we want to make sure that it's right. So the current plan, or the proposal, rather, is to go ahead and include a lot of the back end that's going to be required for the REST API during 4.4, and then allow the, the current version of that API to be tested for a little bit longer during this cycle so that it can be included in 4.5. So that's the current, that's the current proposal. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'm, I'm super excited about it making in. I think it will help many, many folks. The other thing is we're finally getting term meta, which, I don't know, for those that understand, probably like yay and those that don't like eh. So the best way to explain it is Someone described it as posts before there were custom post types. And I think, I think that's a little bit close. The more, the more technical way to explain it is that right now, you know how you have custom, custom fields or information that's attached to a post? Well, you can't do that with terms right now at all. And, you, and that makes it very hard to relate posts to each other um, and relate categories to each other. So this this will change all of that. It's been a multi-step process because it's, it turns out that it's pretty hard to change the way everyone's database schema works for however many installs we have now, whatever it is, 55 million probably. It turns out that's a little bit hard. Um, so it's taken three releases to get us here and two years of development. <laughs> but almost, almost, we're almost here. So that'll be cool. For those of you that are developers and, and use similar plugins already in the room, you'll want to make sure and look and see that your plugins are compatible or have a plan for upgrade to the core supported way of doing things. We're trying to communicate with those developers as well as we can and as much in advance as we can, but it's totally possible that there will be conflicts between those two. So make sure that you check it out. And if it's something that, like, especially if you contact the author and they're not willing to do anything about it, um, well, bring it up. Talk, talk to us about it. Talk to me about it. And we'll see what we can do to you know, sort of protect the most users possible and keep it working well. Another thing that's happening is that, we're, is that it, the comment system is getting overhauled, which is not something that was expected, but this is the back end of the comment system, just to make it clear. Um, for anyone that has a lot of comments on your site, you've probably noticed it's kind of slow. Scott's trying to fix that. <laughs> so the biggest change in core, I think, is that a year ago, there were 16 committers. And this includes the, the people who are temporarily allowed to add code to WordPress um, during, during a release, which is pretty normal. Now, there are 24. So the, sphere, the sort of sphere of influence and also the and also the speed at which WordPress development can be, can be done has, has increased a ton. And it's really exciting to see that happen and all of the people uh, step up with those responsibilities. So that is what I have. And uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm out of time. But I would love for you to come and chat with me afterward. Uh, we can go outside or to the next room over about your most or least favorite changes during the past year. Thank you. Thank you.